For a while around 2010, mobile gaming devs felt determined to prove that they could make big blockbusters just like the ones you played on your consoles or your computer. And this is something we see across almost every new form of media. We saw it all throughout the 2000s with regular console and PC gaming. In the early 2000s, people still saw video games as just being toys for kids, and the gaming market was determined to prove them wrong. Around the 360 and PS3 generation, Gaming devs were determined to prove that video games could be art just like the big movies. The problem is that once you settle into this mindset, you no longer take advantage of what makes you unique. People aren't playing video games just to watch another movie. People play video games because they're interactive. I'm sure just using the word cinematic to describe a video game will trigger some of you all these years later. In a similar way, almost no one is sitting at home in front of their computer or their console waiting to play their mobile games. Mobile gaming's advantage is the ability to leave your house and play a quick game. That's why games like Call of Duty Mobile do so well. Quick, to the point games that are easily digestible without any commitment. And then you add in all the microtransactions that, turns out, are quite profitable. And apparently the market doesn't seem to care. There's a lot less regulations on these styles of games than there is on console and PC games. Then you also have to factor in the kind of demographic that will be playing these games. Everyone has a phone. Not everyone is going to go out and buy a dedicated gaming console or PC. So looking back at games like Nova 3 is incredibly interesting, because for a short while they genuinely were making seven hour long regular video games on your phone that would work perfectly fine on an Xbox 360, a PC, or a PS3. Were these games as good as their bigger brothers? Well, let's find out. Hey, Jarek here. Longtime viewers of this channel will probably have a question right away. What happened to Nova 2? Why are you going directly from Nova 1 to Nova 3? Well, the short answer is that Nova 2 is lost to time. You cannot play it anymore in any way. The long answer is I spent a good five hours trying to get it working, and you just can't. So the obvious, you can't play it on your phone anymore. iOS and Android updates have just made it completely unplayable. So unless you have a phone frozen in time, you cannot play it in its native release. So your mind probably then goes to where my mind went. Just emulate it. Well, no emulator works with this game. Editing Jarek here with much worse video quality and much worse audio quality because I'm literally recording this on my phone. That was a lie. I'm a big fat liar. The next three minutes of this video was going to be me explaining how I spent a good five or six hours trying to get Nova 2 working on an emulator and that it's just not possible. But then a viewer sent me an email with an APK file that works in the emulator. So Nova 2 is not lost to time, which makes me happy but damn did I waste a lot of time trying to get this to work. This APK file was specifically cracked to not update when it launches, which was the missing piece. Every other APK file I got would update as soon as it launched. And because of this update, it would make it crash the moment it got past the opening cutscene. So I'm gonna be playing these games completely out of order. I will get to Nova 2 at some point or another. I definitely will cover that as well. So if there's any discrepancy in this video, Note that I really struggled with an emulator and Nova 2 to get it working and then eventually gave up and went to Nova 3 and was very confused about the story and everything going on. This is why websites like My Abandonware and Piracy is actually really important. Game preservation is not something that devs really take too seriously. In the case of mobile games, it's even harder because iOS and Android is constantly being updated. What's less unfortunate is that I have a sponsor for this video. NordVPN. You probably already know that NordVPN can change your virtual location. It's incredibly easy to use, just within a few clicks you apparently, according to the internet, live across the world. This is beneficial for a lot of obvious reasons you've come to know. Say there's a video that you can't watch on YouTube, change your location. There's a show on Netflix you want to watch, but it's only available in another country, change your location. There's a game you can't buy in your region, change your location. There's region lock servers, change your location. Now you can play with your friends across the world. It takes moments and you get access to so many things in the internet that you usually wouldn't have access to. And when I say so many, I mean there are over 5,400 servers in 59 different countries. And this is available on tons of different platforms, Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, you name it, you can probably run NordVPN on it. But a VPN is also useful for online security. For example, blocking DDoS attacks. If you stream, 
it's kind of important. Then there's some other things like an anti-malware feature. Threat protection blocks intrusive ads and web trackers. Anytime you download a file, threat protection will also inspect it for malware and automatically scans URLs and blocks malicious ones. You can turn on an automatic kill switch. If your VPN drops, it'll automatically block that device from accessing the internet for extra safety. For extra added safety, you could have a double VPN. And right now there is an exclusive deal on this channel. If you go to nordvpn.com slash Jarek, there's a 30 day money back guarantee if you don't like whatever you're getting. And on top of this, you get four bonus months on this package. That is an exclusive deal to this channel. So again, nordvpn.com slash Jarek to try it out. So a huge thanks goes to NordVPN for sponsoring this channel. And let's go back to Nova 3. See, we didn't lose the original Nova because they released it on PSP as well. They also released it on PS3, so maybe we can emulate that, but I don't think people cared enough. I don't know if it's possible or not. I only played it on PSP. Nova 2 didn't get that treatment, so we just don't have that option. Nova 3 also didn't get this treatment, and you also cannot play this on your phone. With iOS and Android updates, it broke it, and then they delisted it. So unless you have a phone that hasn't been updated from that time, you literally cannot play Nova 3. My solution, again, was emulation and thankfully, this time I'm able to get it going. Just at a very cinematic frame rate. Yeah, this thing is hard to emulate. Most emulators won't even run it. Bluestacks thankfully does run it under very specific settings. Change any of these settings and it instantly crashes and will not run at all. I could not get the frame rate up in any way whatsoever. This game is just really hard to emulate. And even while it does run, it crashes all the time just for seemingly no reason. Damn it. I also had an extra issue with Bluestacks where it just wouldn't work with my controller. It would detect that it's plugged in, but then it wouldn't be usable in game, so I just couldn't use a controller at all. Would have been a lot more natural and less annoying to play it that way. Instead, I had to make a bunch of changes in the emulator to simulate swiping on the screen and aiming, and ugh, this is a pain. Especially since to swap weapons and abilities, you need to swipe, and this was very inconsistent. Most of the time, it just didn't work well. So yeah, kind of jank playing on a keyboard and mouse through an emulator on a mobile game that came out in 2012. But as of right now, this is the only way you can play this game. If not for this emulator, this game would also be lost a time. Okay, so there's your context. A mobile game from 2012. And honestly, for a mobile game from 2012, these graphics are pretty good. They're interesting in a way that they're not as good as 360 graphics, but they're definitely better than PS2 graphics. So they remind me of those games that came out on PC in between the two generations. You know, right during that time when Half-Life 2 and Doom 3 and Far Cry and all those games were releasing around then. Yet at the same time, this game is not of that era, so it still kind of has the aesthetic of the grittier, more manly first-person shooters that came out in the late 2000s. I say manlier with big air quotes there. As for the story, I mostly have no idea what's going on. Without my ability to play Nova 2, I'm missing the whole centerpiece of this story, so uh, things are just kind of happening in my mind. Now I do play Nova 1, and the part that is important from that game is that there is a species called the Judgers. The Judgers are part of the most advanced civilization you can possibly get. It is their job to judge the universe. If your species is stepping too out of line, you get deleted. So that context is important, but basically nothing else from the first game, and everything else coming into the start of Nova 3 happened in the second game, so again, I don't know what's happening. What I do understand is that humanity is stealing artifacts from the Judgers, which seems like a terrible idea, and they find out rather quick. As punishment, you need to go find two other artifacts, and that's pretty much what happens throughout the entire course of the game. This isn't to say there aren't other characters that you interact with, but that's the main plot. And I will say, for a mobile game from 2012, I'm actually surprised that the voice acting isn't terrible. I need your help to make it functional again, and to remove the infestation. Infestation? Dominion. Want me to kill your own people? We are not all Dominion puppets. Some of us desire freedom. Some of us fight. Frank, sounds familiar. This is a competent attempt at writing a decent story. They were clearly shooting for the production value of a console level game. So let's talk about the gameplay. It's pretty much just like all of those other games you played, but that's kind of the point. However, the thing that stood out to me is that Nova One was a Halo clone, and somewhere in between Nova 1 and Nova 3 turn into a crisis clone. Like this first level in the city fighting these enemies 
this is very clearly Crisis. However, occasionally you still see things that are very blatantly ripped from Halo aesthetically, like these enemies are very similar to Elites, and this car is just a warthog. However, the more I played this game, the less I was really getting a Crisis or Halo vibe. It was actually kind of reminding me of the conduit of all games. As for the controls, they're pretty simple mobile gaming controls. You have a virtual D-pad on the left. You got a big fire button and jump button and use power button in the bottom right. You tap the ammo in the top right to reload. You swipe on that ammo to swap weapons. Like pretty much everything here is self-explanatory. The actual actions you are doing is like any other shooter of its time. There's actually not a whole lot to talk about in this regard. It's very much so just a linear first person shooter. It's not so linear to be a Call of Duty game. So I did find that it strikes that balance where it lets me actually play the game game without being confusing or maze-like. Conduit 2 really is a good comparison. Now, I have mentioned the powers. They seem more interesting than they really are, but at least they do add something to the game. The first basic power you get is sort of a shockwave attack. The second power you get will paralyze an enemy for a short period of time. Really good against tougher enemies. The third power is just straight up bullet time, and that's it. That's all you got for powers. The weapons are almost all just kind of standard weapons. One of my biggest complaints is that the game is a little too reliant on the assault rifle, so you just end up using this for most of the game. The shotgun is pretty satisfying. This game does have those mid 2000s ragdolls that I love. Going slow motion and blasting people with shotguns and watching them fly across the room is pretty fun. Although I don't know if it's just me, but this shotgun really reminds me of the shotgun from Singularity. And yeah, you've got your rocket launchers, grenade launchers, sniper rifle. I mean, these are weapons you've used tons of times before. The sniper rifle has an egregious amount of aim assist. It will easily lock onto opponents. And when you first scope in, it just straight up goes to them. If you're using touch controls, you do kind of need that so it makes sense. Using a mouse, it makes things really easy. With that said, this mouse aim is not perfect. You probably noticed it drifting all over the screen. It just kind of does that on its own. So this isn't like a regular PC shooter. Anyway, the one time the weapons get interesting is with the upgrades. When you complete a level, you get a certain amount of points. If you pause the game, you can buy upgrades. Some of these upgrades are just upgrades to the abilities you have, but other ones are just straight up sci-fi weapons. I only had enough to buy two. One was this sort of automatic red laser shooting thing pretty damn strong. The other was a lightning gun, and this was basically a lightning substitute for the sniper rifle, so also strong. You get limited ammo with these, so use them sparingly. As for the enemies, there is a decent variety here. Although vast majority of the time, you're just going to be fighting grunts that hide behind cover and shoot at you. Yeah, these may look like aliens, but they're basically just grunts with the occasional ability to teleport. Sounds more interesting than it is. It's kind of typical shooter stuff. That said, you will have to fight jetpack enemies and then later on have to fight these big dog things. Mixed in with these aliens is also just heavier enemies as a whole. These guys have to be from Tron or maybe Valve's Ricochet. I don't know what those discs are. Point being, there's variety in this game. You're not going to be fighting the same enemy for the whole time. And occasionally the game does try to break itself up and throw a puzzle your way, but these kind of suck. One maybe just trial and error, figure out what order of these control pads you need to insert this crystal into. One maybe just moving this ball through other balls so you can finally get access to an elevator. And at one point the game even gives you a jetpack. That sounds awesome. But the jetpack is only used for this brief platforming section and then it takes it away from you. Careful, the jetpack fuel reserves will be depleted in five seconds. Three, two, All right. one. Fuel exhausted. You're on foot the rest of the way. They give me a jetpack just fun. for that platforming. Are you serious? What, why? Why would you do that? Hey, here's something fun. Do something not fun. All right, let's take away the fun thing now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't think I have ever been blue balled harder in a game before. That is the only time you get a jetpack. You don't use it for any awesome combat, literally just for one platforming section. Why? Really though, the best way I have to describe this game is that it feels like your standard double-A shooter on the 360. It doesn't quite have the polish and budget of a true triple-A title, but also, it's not awful. It occasionally feels like the levels are dragging on a little too long, or you've done the same thing one too many times. And in fact, the game itself is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I looked up a long play on YouTube and it was only about three hours long, and typically, if you see a long play, your actual play section will be slightly longer than that. So I assumed, okay, maybe like four hours long. 
Nope, it was seven. Seven is a typical length of a normal first person shooter on PC or console. I did not expect that from a mobile game. I wish I knew that coming into this. Although the biggest thing that sucks about this game is the final boss. With the final boss, you have to fight this guy popping in and out of existence. He's the actual person you need to damage. The giant thing up there trying to kill you, ignore that. Yeah, you attack this guy, then the big monster attacks you for a minute or so. You can just wait until you can shoot this guy again, rinse and repeat. Unfortunately, this boss has a one hit kill move and it should be easy to dodge. You sit behind cover. I don't know if this is an emulator problem or not, but it would just kill me anyway. This is the point where I said, screw this and just looked up a long play. I knew it was the final boss and I was pretty sure the emulator was just bugging out. So I watched the last cutscene there. And this game ends in a to be continued. You get a cliffhanger on a game that will absolutely never get an ending. So it really is just like Conduit 2. So how does Nova 3 stack up to console and PC first person shooters of its time? or even first person shooters of today. Well, it does a decent job. If you like shooters, you're probably gonna be okay with this game. It's not gonna wow you. It's not the best thing I've ever seen in the world. I know a lot of people have a very firm attachment to this game because they played it when they were younger. I'm starting to tell the children are becoming adults because I'm seeing a lot of posts about people saying that mobile games from 2012 were their childhood. For me, when I think of childhood games, I think early 2000s or late 90s. No, it doesn't make me feel old. Like I said, it just makes me realize the kids are becoming adults. Anyway, Nova 3 is fine. Even with the cinematic frame rate and the emulator crashing all the time, I wasn't hating myself while playing it, but I wasn't really, really enjoying it. And after a certain point, I kind of felt like I had seen everything. But I digress. It is a really interesting look at where mobile game was going during that time. A time I think was much better than where mobile gaming is today. But I'm also biased because I would rather play quote unquote real games than mobile games. That's going to piss a lot of people off saying that. You know what I mean? I want the more traditional gaming experience. Either way, that should sum everything up. I want to give a huge thanks to my sponsor, NordVPN. If you want to try NordVPN for yourself, go to nordvpn.com slash Jarek. And a huge thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch while I streamed this game for a lot longer than I thought. You can go to Twitch in the bottom right by clicking that link. If you subscribe to my Twitch, you will be able to see my videos at minimum a week ahead of time. And of course, thank all of you for watching this video.